biochemist Martin Gruebel regularly dons a pair of headphones in his lab at the University of Illinois. But instead of music, he listens to a cacophony of clinking, jarring noises, as if a group of robots were having a loud argument. The payoff for this pain. These sounds help Gruebel understand how proteins in our body interact with water. Protein molecules fold like shape-shifting transformers to carry out vital cellular functions in our body. When things go wrong, misfolded proteins can form plaques in the brain, a process that is thought to be the cause of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. Gruebel has devised computer simulations to understand protein folding, which occurs primarily in the water inside our cells. But the interactions between a protein and trillions of water molecules are too complex, and happen too fast, for him to see them in his simulations. So he listens for them instead. You have to think of that sound in the same way that you think about a graph as opposed to a painting, Gruebel said. He uses a software program called Kaiman to add a specific sound to each of the numerous bonds that occur as the protein folds. When played back, the sound brings order to the chaos by highlighting which particular interactions dominate. I can close my eyes and tell you, aha, there's a protein to water hydrogen bond that just formed, he said as the track played out. Once I've heard it, I can actually go back to the simulation and zoom in on that one specific water molecule and figure out which one it was and where it was making the bond. Gruebel is part of a growing community of researchers using sound to convey scientific phenomena. It's the auditory equivalent of data visualization, and its adherents call it data sonification. The concept isn't entirely new. One of the earliest examples of using sounds to represent data is the dosimeter, or Geiger counter. This instrument was designed in 1928 to indicate the amount of radioactivity in a given place with clicking sounds. The faster the pace of the clicks, the more dangerous the environment. It's a no-nonsense way to signal danger in a place that's literally trying to kill you. The Geiger counter was a mechanical device, but today, with digital audio, any piece of data can be mapped into sound. Kaima was developed by Carlos Galetti, a composer and sound engineer based in Urbana-Champaign. Its original purpose was all Hollywood, it was used in three Star Wars movies and the animated flick Wally. -E. Its user interface allows individual sounds to be wired together like components in an electrical circuit. The result is a versatile tool that can produce endless audio combinations, even the soundtrack of human biology. Scaletti believes sonification should be driven by the data alone. You have to be able to listen and analyze what you are hearing and not just sit back and let it wash over you emotionally, she said.